Welcome to video training for G-Tube feeding. This video will show you how to use your G-Tube for feeding or medication, how to flush your G-Tube, how to properly clean around your G-Tube site, and how to properly clean tubing connections. Start by gathering all of your supplies. This includes water, an NFIT syringe, and your prescribed formula or medication. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with warm soapy water before proceeding. A bolus feed is a feeding that uses gravity to deliver formula through a syringe into a feeding tube. Before you start, pinch your G-tube just below its cap. This prevents excess air from entering your stomach. Next, open the cap and screw the syringe onto the end of the G-tube. Hold the syringe up so it's higher than where the G-tube enters your abdomen. Be careful not to pull the G-tube out of your abdomen. Begin by flushing the G-tube. Pour the prescribed amount of water into your syringe. Remember, your G-tube needs to be pinched just below its cap. It's okay to use whatever water you normally drink at home, tap or bottled, but it must be room temperature. Now, let go of your pinched G-tube and allow the water to flow into your stomach. Once the water has drained from the G-tube into your abdomen, repinch it just below the syringe. You are now ready for formula. Pour your prescribed formula into the syringe. Your formula must also be at room temperature. Let go of your pinch and allow the formula to flow through the G-tube into your abdomen. This will take a little time. Your tubing should be held low alongside your body, allowing your formula to flow slowly. Your dietitian can tell you how much formula is prescribed for each feeding. Be sure to ask about this in advance. Try to ingest at least one can of formula through your tube. Depending on how you feel, you may not be able to tolerate much, or you might be okay with more. If you have leftover feeding, make sure to cover it and store it in the refrigerator. Do not keep any open formula for more than 24 hours. Once you've reached your prescribed amount of feeding or formula, pinch your G-tube and attach your syringe. Add at least 30 milliliters of water into the syringe. Unpinch your tube and allow the water to flow through and clean the G-tube. You can recap your G-tube once the water has started to flow into your abdomen. When taking medication through your tube, it's best to use a liquid form of the prescription. If that's not available, ask your doctor if it's okay to use solid pills that you've crushed with a pill crusher. You should not crush medications that are time-released, gel caps, or coated. Add your thoroughly crushed medication to 30 milliliters of water and mix until a slurry is created. Crushed medications must be dissolved in water or you risk clogging your G-tube. The medication can now be slowly administered through your G-tube, following the same steps as if you were using formula. Pinch the G-tube, attach the syringe and fill with water, unpinch and flush the G-tube with water, pinch again as you add the slurry to your syringe, then release the pinch and allow the slurry to flow into your stomach. Flush again with water and recap. Make sure to always flush your G-tube after administering medication. Otherwise, the slurry mixture could clog your tube. Do not put more than one medication at a time into your G-tube and always create a slurry mixture with water. Each medication must be added separately through the G-tube. And between medications, be sure to flush your tube with at least 10 milliliters of water. Keep your G-tube site clean using gauze or a Q-tip with soap and water. Do not use alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. This can dry out the skin around the tube area. Do not clean inside the hole into your stomach. Do not clean inside the hole to your stomach. If you are keeping gauze around the area, use just one piece of gauze, then change it daily. It's important to clean your G-tube site daily or whenever it looks soiled. Make sure to wipe excess medication and formula from the cap and moat before connecting to the feeding tube. Wash your hands with soapy water. Use a disposable toothbrush to clean the moat and cap. Rotate the toothbrush in the bottom of the moat and scrub gently. Rotate the toothbrush in the cap and scrub gently. Rinse with water, wipe dry with a clean cloth or gauze, and allow the area to air dry. 
Do not allow your G-tube to hang freely from the stomach hole. This can lead to a tear in your skin that may cause stomach contents to leak. Also, do not tuck the tube into your pants. Tape the G-tube to your body and always tape it upwards. The collar that sits around your tube at the point it's inserted into your abdomen is called a bumper. The bumper should sit comfortably next to the skin, close enough to keep the G-tube from moving around, but loose enough to allow air between the bumper and your skin. A bumper that's too far from the abdomen allows the tube to move and can be uncomfortable for you. A bumper that's too close to your abdomen won't allow enough airflow to keep your skin healthy. Here are some quick tips. Don't put anything in your G-tube other than water, formula, liquid medication, or crushed pills. If your G-tube falls out of the abdomen hole, don't panic. Rinse it off, put it back in the abdominal hole, and go to your local emergency room. Don't use the G-tube again until it's been checked by a medical professional. If you have any questions, please talk to your dietitian or contact the Nutrition Therapy Department at 813-745-3609.